What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you some of the rarest species of reptiles I've ever seen in my life. My favorite species of iguanas ever, the banded Fiji iguana, and some 100 year old Galapagos tortoises we got to hang out with. I went to California on this trip with a lot of other cool people and we filmed all this stuff. We got to interact with so many cool animals. So here's the first part of these videos and I'm glad that you guys are gonna watch them because it was a lifetime experience for me. Right, so there are three main species of Fiji iguanas. The Fiji banded iguana, the Lao banded iguana, and the Fiji crested iguana. Now, the Fiji banded iguana is the one that I saw in person, the one that we got to interact with, and the one that I'm mostly gonna speak about in this video. The Fiji crested iguana is another extremely rare iguana, and there's actually not any legal Fiji crested iguanas here in the US. They're all back in the Fiji Islands, or I think there's some in Australia as well. Now, the Fiji banded iguana and the Lao banded iguana are almost identical. And in fact, a lot of people thought they were the same species up until I think like 2008 or 2009 or something. Now, the Fiji banded iguana is an extremely, extremely rare animal. It's an critically endangered species of iguana that's in the old world you know in the fiji islands it's one of the only iguanas in the old world the old world being like you know the east uh like asia you know those that side of the hemisphere and then the new world being the americas most of the iguanas that we know of are in the americas you know central america south america the caribbean islands but this Fiji iguana is one of the only species of iguana that, that is back in the new, I'm um, sorry, the old world. The Fiji iguanas for Fiji, there are like national treasures, so they take a lot of care of for them. They are taken very seriously. They don't allow a lot of exportation. I know that they did export some to some zoos. And I think, I believe that most of the ones that have been exported have actually been smuggled illegally. But, um, now that zoos are starting to work with them and have successful breeding programs with them um you know they are you know being kept in the u.s only in zoos there shouldn't be any in private um private facilities or private um like keepers shouldn't have them really i know in canada some people have them and in europe some private keepers are allowed to keep to have them but in the united states unfortunately for us there are no the, the, the US Fish and Wildlife do not allow us to keep them at this moment. Now, all of these Fiji iguanas are endangered because of all the habitat destruction that's going on in the Fiji Islands, you know, because of agriculture and a couple other things. And of course, of because of introduced species like rats, cats are killing a lot of them. So they are, you know, it, it sucks because it's such an isolated population of animals in the wild that if anything happens in that island, it could they could wipe them out but like i said luckily there are a couple zoos and a couple facilities that are breeding them and so they shouldn't go anywhere because um a lot of people have successfully been breeding them but you know with that being said there are still not that many around now like most iguana species these guys are arboreal so they like to hang out in the trees and the canopies are rarely seen on the ground and like most iguana species they eat a lot of plant matter but the Fiji iguanas in particular have been known to eat a lot of insect matter as well. So they're omnivores. Although iguanas in particular tend to be more, they lean more on the plant side. So they'll eat a lot more plants. They'll be heavy on like hibiscus, all types of leafy greens. They could eat some fruits as well. Um, but I, a lot of juveniles have been fed and they seem to really like like crickets and small little insects that they could digest easily. Now the cool thing about these Fiji iguanas is that they're sexually dimorphic. These banded Fiji iguanas, the males have a bright green background with like really light blue or even white 
big, thick bands, and they're absolutely gorgeous. The Fiji Crested Iguanas are very, very similar, except the bands are a little bit thinner, and you see they have a little bit more of a crest on top for the males. Now, the female of the Fiji Iguanas are usually all green. They, some of them do have hues of blue and stuff, but for the most part, they're all gonna be green, so it's very easy to distinguish male and female. Now, these guys are actually not that big. They get about like eight to 10 inches from, you know, snout to vent. I wanna say a, maybe a total size of like 20 inches with a tail. They're not like some of the other iguanas that could get a massive like four or five feet long. So it's really cool because they're a little bit more manageable. And in this place that we saw these Fiji iguanas, it was incredible. Like they had pairs in basically like four foot tall by two feet by two feet enclosures. Um, and you could see they are actually thriving there. They, the, the place we went to, they have one of the biggest, uh, most successful breeding programs of Fiji iguanas in the country and in the world, I believe. So it was really cool to see how they take care of them and to see the offspring that they have hatched. And it was just a dream come true because it's such a rare animal and my absolute favorite species of iguanas ever. They're just super gorgeous, especially the males when they're in the midst, you know, in the middle of the breeding season and they're just really brightly colored. And another cool thing about them is like they, like like most reptiles, they their color will lighten up or, or darken down depending on the lighting or their mood or all these things. Now, these guys, um, obviously when they're in the middle of the breeding season and they're basking, they're gonna be super bright, the males. And their care is very similar to some of the other iguanas, you know, they, they require a hot spot of about like, you know, 95, 100 degrees, um, a cooler side in the low 80s or even low 70s. And like I said, they're arboreal, so they're gonna come up, they're gonna perch, they're gonna bask, they're gonna absorb all the UVB and all that heat, and then, you know, they're gonna come down, eat, and do all things iguanas are normally do. But the main attraction is we have a larger collection of Fiji iguanas in the United States from outside Fiji. So that's our really interesting guys first. So these are all our breeding pairs. Here. Oh and our God. most prized possession is actually um, just in the past month or two, we've had already five baby Fijis. So we're what? like, we're just booming Fijis <laughs> left and right. And actually, <laughs> Yeah, and you can see this here, such a dynamic, the boys are the ones that are like big, and colorful, and colorful, and colorful, and colorful, Blake, when are you going to eat these in the ranch, bro? Soon, don't worry, we got this. Alright, cool. Because <laughs> I need some. <laughs> This is Wes, one of our our males. Wow. How long have you guys had him? Uh, this guy, he was born in uh, 2009. He was born here? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. He's so pretty. And we give, uh, some of our guys are at Tampa Zoo now, I believe. That's where we send ours sometimes. That's awesome. Yeah. He's cute. I have some, you go, we go, to, we'll walk yeah, back down there. There's some males that I have that are just like in full breed on color right now and they're just super bright and pretty. He's gorgeous though. Mm -hmm. But I just love them because this is as big as they get. So they're just like the cutest little, a lot different than, you know, the big rhinos. So as if hanging out with these critically endangered Fiji iguanas isn't enough, we also got to spend time with some of the oldest animals in captivity. These are 120 year old Galapagos tortoises and they are absolutely amazing. They are, they are like prehistoric animals that 
you know, I can only even dream of seeing, let alone having to interact with them. So these guys were actually some of the coolest and most docile and most friendliest tortoises I've ever spent time with. They were not shy at all. And the cool thing about these Galapagos tortoises is that they are some of the oldest animals in existence. The oldest Galapagos tortoise known to man, I think has been like over 150 years old, which is absolutely crazy if you think about it. And these guys weigh over, you know, they can weigh up to 500 pounds. That is a lot of tortoise, um, especially from coming from, you know, the red foots and the socatas that we have here in Florida and that we work with. It's a completely different ball game, but Basically, the Galapagos tortoises are, can only be found in the island of Galapagos, and they've been living there for hundreds and hundreds of years. And Darwin was actually one of the ones that first studied them. But what's cool about them is that these guys have been, you know, thriving in this island for years and years and years, up until basically humans came into the island and brought a bunch of introduced animals like pigs, goats, and everything, and rats that started basically eating their food and eating their eggs. So then the, the Galapagos tortoises started to have a little bit of a struggle, but these animals are so interesting that they adapted and they started eating, instead of plants, they started eating a lot of the fruit trees that we planted over there in the Galapagos, kind of like guava and some of the other plants and, and uh, fruits. So. It's really interesting because these guys, they sleep most of the day, they barely move. Um, they, they sleep maybe like 16 hours a day and they move, you know, a couple of those hours just looking for food or maybe water and then they go back to sleep. And they spend all their life, all 150 plus years of their life, basically doing that. So it's very interesting to see how they, when we got there, how, interactive they were with us because they were basically all coming out they would love being rubbed on their neck they would pull their neck out they would stand up really tall and it was just an absolutely incredible experience i can't i can't put it into words how special that moment was because most people don't even get to see a, a galapagos tortoise let alone interact with one for how let alone interact with like eight of them so it was really really cool and um yeah this is insane, bro. <laughs> All these Galapagos tortoises. We got Blake over there. Look at this thing. Over a hundred years old. So hard. So hard. Great. You guys just have one of these back so i hope you guys enjoyed this video this was definitely an experience of a lifetime and some bucket list items were checked off for sure um i gotta give a special shout out to you name it tours and birds and exotics of the world i'll put their information in the description if you want to do something like this one of these crazy trips make sure you follow them make sure you hit them up because they're always doing trips like this and you know i'm definitely going to be going on a lot more trips that are you know basically life experiences just like this one um but as you guys know follow us on all the other social media if you enjoy the content we put out we got instagram facebook snapchat twitter tiktok all that good stuff so follow us on there make sure you like this video and you subscribe and until next time guys i also got a whole bunch of other footage i'm going to show you this is not the end of it trust me we did a lot of other cool things so stay tuned for those videos thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next week